Hi, I'm Daniela Camboni, and welcome back to our summer series here on StansberryInvestor.com. Today, I have two of the most influential women in the investment space. They are Pamela and Mary Ann Aiden, uh, the force behind the Aiden forecast. I have known them for a very long time, so this is really a special treat for me. Welcome uh, to my show here at StansberryInvestor.com. Oh, thank, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's great to be with you. Yeah, it's a real pleasure. And good to be reunited with you, um, even via Zoom. And um, I'm just happy to get your thoughts since it's been so long since we've spoken on, you know, on the economy as a whole. I want to get your thoughts on where you think we could get a lot of value and, you know, just that's buying for our buck right now in terms of investing. But let's start, um, you know, I'll take a page from your latest newsletter where you're like, you know, whether it's stagflation, disinflation, inflation, whatever it is these pressures have really been building up from last year. So where are we are, where are we are today? Uh, Pamela, let's start with you. Um, where are we and how are we doing? Well, we're, uh, we have these deflationary forces that are still very strong within this inflationary that the Fed claims is transitory. But that's the, that's the key word there. How long is transitory? Is it a year, two years, six months? Uh, we think it's going to be a couple a couple of years, and maybe they're going to like having more inflation than they're expecting. I think they'd be happy if it happens. But the deflationary drag is is more powerful actually than the inflation. So I think they're happy to get as much as they can for now. In the meantime, we've seen um, a lot of of the assets rising this past year since March of last year, and so that alone you can say. With the dollar falling, of course, that's uh, that's another thing. That alone is sort of inflationary. But we even looking at the CPI on an annual basis, it's grown a lot, and um, it's caused the flat T bills to fall down to almost minus around five percent, negative five percent. So um, yes, there is a lot of problems. The Fed knows it, it sees it, and uh, we don't think transitory is is short term, mm -hmm. and we we think it's going to be more like they say 2023 before they can feel comfortable with the whole thing. There's, it's still a very much um, uh, go and see and start and stop. And, and, and Mary Ann, you know, I guess the question that a lot of investors have on their minds is, you know, are we better off in this transitory and inflationary environment, you know, four to 6% or on the flip side, a recession? Much better in the transitory <laughs> inflation because it's, you know, it's, it's manageable, but the, the thing is, is it going to get away from the four to 6%? Is it going to soar because of all the money that's been created and all the stimulus due to COVID? So that's something we're watching too, because this, you know, these recent numbers have been kind of, everyone's a bit surprised that gee, it's at 12% annualized on producer prices. And, um, you know, those are things I think we could keep seeing that and, but like Pam said, I think if they, a bit of inflation is, nobody's going to mind that. So. And I guess, you know, in your years covering uh, the various markets and economies, have you ever seen one quite like this one? <laughs> Not quite like this one, no. no. Because of the intensity. We thought a financial crisis in 2008 was the worst. And that's like child's play next to today. So yeah, this is pretty heavy in our, in our adult life, which is pretty many years. <laughs> um, this is the worst. Yes. Okay. So let's talk about how um, you're protecting yourself and sectors that you're liking right now. I know you're, you've both been big advocates of gold for a long time, various mining stocks, but let's focus on gold, right? It's not having the exact same summer that we saw last year when we hit that nominal high of 2000, but August isn't over yet. And that might just repeat itself <laughs> again, who knows? But we tend to see these flash crashes happen more likely in the summer. And there's various theories as to why yeah. that might be happening because Europe's on vacation, other people on vacation and funky things tend to happen. How do you digest it? What do you do when you see these type of hiccups in the gold market? Marianne? Well, it, it's to be expected. It, it have like you say, it, it's happened before. It'll happen again. It's happening right now, as a matter of fact. And um, but really, if you look at the hiccup that we're in now, which some people are kind of shocked that it it has dropped the last couple of months, but it's really only down ten percent. 
And when you compare that with the huge rise gold has had, it's not that big of a deal. And it's truly a normal, moderate downward correction. So yes, it's broken through some support, but we're still very bullish on gold. One, one of the main reasons being that it's really undervalued compared to just about all of the markets. If you take stocks, bonds, the other metals, it's undervalued. Then we've got that real interest rate that's that's a huge bullish factor, minus almost 5% uh, in collecting interest in T-bills with, when you take inflation into consideration. So that makes gold a lot more attractive. And it's just got a lot in its favor. It's in a bull market. It has been since the end of 2015. And that's still the case. Now, do you have any preference right now in terms of gold uh, versus mining stocks? Physical gold versus mining stocks? Well, the, um, the mining stocks were rising from the pits, as we call it, versus gold since 2015. And they're still kind of in the pits at, in, on a relative basis versus gold. So. Um, Gold has the upper hand, but it doesn't mean that minor stocks are uh, secondary. They have a lot of room on the upside. Talk about over undervalued, <laughs> being under gold, they are the most overval undervalued. So, so let me ask you, because it's a difficult space to navigate, especially for those just entering the mining space. I mean, you have all the juniors, you have the exploration companies, you have the mid-tiers, you have the majors. How do you decide where to park your cash here? Well, if you're talking about the gold mining business, um, seniors are, are um, better when risk is when risk is a uh, high. Seniors are better when the bull market's flourishing. The juniors are the best, and so uh, we like a bit a bit of both because at one point it may flourish, and there, the, but you see that a lot if you just compare the seniors to the juniors on a ratio basis. Uh, that is another indication of risk for the the gold shares, and and um, so this is what we see, and also. Once the rise gets started, we think silver will continue to have the upper hand. But right now, gold has the upper hand on a short-term basis. So um, we're, that's what we're seeing, that silver is definitely a long-term buy. And um, so is gold. Right now, in fact, we think that an intermediate low is happening right this moment. August 10th, well, as you know, it's the slow months of summer. And uh, fall is the when everyone starts buying again. So and August traditionally has been many times in the past intermediate low areas. Yeah. And so this last fall since Friday, really, the, fr the Friday fall that was so, and the overnight and into today, um, that looks like it's nearing an end. It's, it's a volatile move at the end of a, a two month decline. And so we think that this intermediate move of the last two months is getting close to an end. And we're in an intermediate good buying area in gold in silver and in gold shares. Um, is there any? Are there any other commodities you're 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 liking right now outside of gold and silver, like copper or? Yes, very much. We love the resources. We think uh, the commodity sector in general have a very nice upside potential. <clears throat> and, and last November, all the resource co copper being the lead um, have been fantastic. So they outshine gold, and they and they look like they are right this moment. Everyone loves copper resources. And we do too. There's a lot of good companies out there and we, we definitely are investing in that. But we think they have time to take a back seat a bit while gold um, starts shining. But that doesn't mean that they kind of have that move and, and, but they'll all be on the upside over the next several years. So this we're very bullish on, on commodities in general when you look at the resource and precious metal sector. So, so let me ask you this, is there any room uh, in your portfolios for, for cryptos? How, how do you view uh, Bitcoin, <laughs> oh, you know, Ethereum? It's funny, we've been <clears throat> doing technical analysis on Bitcoin and our subscribers are very happy, even though we don't recommend it because we, we just haven't, uh, honestly, but we like it and we like to follow it. We like to tell our subscribers about it. So we were seeing when it was hit 30,000, we thought this is an intermediate low area. And so we never say buy, but we say this is a minute low area. Um, and if it stays there and breaks 40,000, it's going. So this is what we were seeing as a base. And so right now an intermediate high low, uh, excuse me, an intermediate high area is is on its way. So, so let me ask you this. What keeps you from crossing that threshold to say it is a buy? It seems enticing, <laughs> but what would need to happen to get you to cross over? 
Well, I wanted to say bye. <laughs> I did. Uh, we did. And um, uh, but since we're just um, start well, the last this year, pretty much starting to really get into it on a technical basis. It's very fascinating, actually. Mm -hmm. And and their their history is since 2012, and then Ethereum too. We like that, and following that. But basically, the uh, Bitcoin is kind of like the copper of the sector, and um, so uh, we're following that. And it has a very interesting cyclical pattern. It actually resembles not at the same moment, but over history resembles gold, not in its movement for the moment, but its movement on its own. So it's very interesting. And so this intermediate low has room to go higher, but to stay at record highs right now, that's to be seen. Well, it's a good point because, you know, there's been so much comparison and debates on Bitcoin versus gold and which is the ultimate asset class and which should you own. But what I'm hearing from both of you, there, there's room for, for both assets? Yeah, definitely. Definitely, there are two different things. Uh, and I think they'll always be, and it'll be clear with people that they are two different investments because they don't necessarily move together. Um, I think if anything, Bitcoin will move more with resource sector, but that's still, we're still doing that. We're still waiting to see how that develops really, but that's what it looks like the tendency um, is that. But but no, I think we think that it's, you like Bitcoin, you like gold, you like you like stock market, you like, you know, you ha it's a different, it's a different, sector. Let, let's talk about the stock market for a second here. How much more fuel do you think the market has here? How's it looking? Um, it, it, really, it looks like it's, uh, for a number of reasons, it looks like it's near a top, a major top. So now that could mean in a couple more months, it could be next week, because we can't fine tune it so specifically. But based on this bull market that's been in force since 2009, it looks like it is near an end, and we have a list this long of reasons why. And uh, one is comparing it to other bull markets, that it's very overvalued. It's been fueled by all the stimulus. There's just a, a list of about maybe 20 reasons why, um, which we've mentioned in our letter of that, but of why we think this, and, oh, and the technicals are really, that's really interesting. It's the most overbought it's ever been across the board, all the indexes, NASDAQ, S&P, the Dow, all of them are as overbought as they've ever been. So all of that tells us that the upside is very limited and we're near a top. Mm, so yeah. price discovery is broken. Yeah, I'd like to add that we realized that just Friday, there's a record high in the, in the stock market, the Dow Industrials and the, uh, and, but you know, the transportations peaked last May, they've been coming down, we're thinking, that that may be leading because the emerging markets and that are doing so well. The others, they're kind of rolling over. But um, as, as we're always reminded, Tina is always there. There is no alternative. <laughs> so there's still a possibility with no alternative and everyone wanting um, income and cash and, and, and there's a lot of liquidity around. That liquidity could keep it going for a while longer. But our point is, is that the run since 2009 is in the final stages, mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean the stage is here today. So, so let me ask you, are you out of U.S. equities then now? Pretty much. We have still a small kind of token position, but as of a couple months ago, we started advising that our subscribers lighten up and kind of, you know, just start being cautious. Okay. If they don't want to, if they don't want to lighten up, then just pay attention and be cautious because it could end any time. And the bull market's raging still. So, I mean, yes. Okay, two other um, assets I just want to get your thoughts on. Oil and the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. uh, are you in? Oh. Are you out? Where do we go from here? <laughs> well, the dollar's in an interesting situation, actually. Um, it fell, as you know, from March of last year to just now, the last few months. It's been this year. It's been bottoming. And it's moving into a sideways band, actually. And it looks like it could rise. It could, it could definitely rise uh, the dollar index. It could definitely test its old highs, or at least like recoup half of it. And um, and that would be very damaging to a lot of markets if it does that, even though it doesn't seem like a big deal on its own. But then on the other hand, well, uh, that's what we see with the dollar. And so we see maybe a, a sideways momentum is developing with the currencies 
in general. They're all kind of moving into a sideways band area. So that's what we see in the currency market. I'd just like to add, Please. I think once this intermediate, whatever is going to happen, if it rebounds a little bit, that looking out towards year end, we're going to see the bear market in the dollar, which has been in process for 50 years, continue. Mm -hmm. Like the dollar is going lower. It'll, we think it'll hit new lows probably next year. And we think it is going to go much, much lower. And that'll probably coincide with gold having a big bull market rise. Mm, do you think that's part, I mean, do you think that this, that the Federal Reserve is doing enough to curtail that from happening? Well, that's a good, that's a good point. That's where we did see that sideways band could last a while. Right. And um, we're not saying that that's going to end anytime soon at all. Okay. It's going to be a bounce up and that could last months. You know, usually the currencies are kind of slow in their movements and, and they, they, they kind of stay on course for a while. So, but I, I also, I'd like to add that there are times when gold and the dollar do not, they move together. Like we saw in 2018, they wouldn't move together for over a year. So this will happen. And so this can happen because many times gold, the dollar and bonds end up being like a, um, a safe haven trio. Yeah, right. you're right. People tend to always think, well, gold and the dollar move in opposite directions, but absolutely not true. <laughs> As we, we've all known, we've, we've lived through yeah. moments where that's not been true at all. Mm -hmm. um, any thoughts on oil? Do you like oil right now? Is it a buy here? Well, it's falling. Uh, interestingly, interest rates and, um, and oil moved together. And so the fall in interest rates that it had, even though it's rebounding today, um, is uh, oil is kind of following that pattern. And it's already risen way too much. It was like going above 70 was already, wow, that's a lot. And uh, so, yeah, it's just kind of consolidating its rise. It's certainly the rise is still up. Yeah. I guess to just, just wrap up here, um, if we can hear from each of you a little bit, you know, just some thoughts for our investors watching here on how to navigate these economic times right now, just some words of advice. Well, I, I would um, just say, to be cautious with the stock market. That's, I think that's the most important thing for stock investors right now. And interestingly, we've become recently very bullish on the bond market, surprisingly, because it just looks like it has a lot of upside potential. And people could argue, well, how much lower can interest rates go? And it may not be that much lower. I mean, once you're at one and a half percent or one percent how much lower but the it'll be enough to fuel a nice upward movement bull market in bonds and the fact is they'll probably stay low for a long time and then of course gold is our gold and silver are probably our favorites as far as the ones with the best upside potential and that includes the shares and everything so bonds gold and silver interesting yes. you brought up bonds i'm hearing a lot of differing points of view um, on the bond market. And uh, I like to add that <clears throat> well, uh, bonds and gold tend to move together and they have been since the year 2000. Prior to that, they were totally opposites. And now the, the odd couple stays together since 2000. And for whatever reason, uh, uh, mainly being a safe haven, they're continuing to move together. In fact, this year, if you look at the rise since March, and um, and the double bottom, they've been moving together, and it, it stay, it's still today the same yeah. thing. So if we're bullish for long term on bonds, that's the same with gold. So yes, um, so we like we like bonds. We think as as strange as that seems, and how much bonds are being made and all that, government bonds are still a good investment. And um, so right now they've probably gone a little ahead of themselves, and so any kind of weakness would be a good time to pick some up. Um, and same with gold, this weakness is half and silver, gold shares, they're um, providing a good opportunity. Like nobody likes to buy things on sale, but these are on sale. I never miss a sale, so. <laughs> <laughs> this is the red dot sale. <laughs> this is the red dot sale, exactly. Um, the Aiden sisters, Pamela and Marianne Aiden, the force, the powerhouse behind the Aiden forecast. What a treat. Thank you for joining me from one of my favorite countries in the world, Costa Rica. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having okay. us. It was great. Hope to, see, hope to see you both soon in person. And <laughs> that'd be fun. We'll all go yeah. for, for a drink and talk finance. Um, <laughs> I love that. 
<laughs> That's it for me. Uh, thank you all for watching. We'll have much more for you on stansberryinvestor.com. In the meantime, don't forget to sign up for free premier content you can't get anywhere else at daniellacombone.com. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. <laughs>